the lesson. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Wahara Kakodash. Dumb honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. Shalom to you, Akim and Akwap, that believe and have faith in Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, in these last days. And as you see on the screen, this was on February the 10th in Brazil, a lightning strike. Lightning strikes Christ the healer, man. Christ the redeemer. Salakia. And that's the the times we're in, man. The Lord is tearing down these false, false idols and instruction into our enemies, man. Because we clearly see that the, the uh, enemy is being taken down strategically by Yahweh by Shem Shah. As you see right here, uh, these are current events, biblical uh, biblical names. This just happened in the last week or so. It was 100,000 hens killed in uh, in uh, Basra, Connecticut. Um, a mass shooting, six dead in uh, Goshan, Cali California. Earthquakes in Antioch, Turkey. Train derailment in e East uh, Palestine, in Ohio, man. And um, I just wanted to bring that out because that was just in the last week. That was just in the last week, man. And our people, man, have time is running out on you to repent. Time is running out. Killer is released from prison and says he'll kill again. I got 17 years in, man. I got two body six and supermax, man. I did 17 years. I did I did 12 up top in Minnesota. I did five down here, but I did six years of Supermax. That's what were the circumstances of you killing them? Shit, I just robbed some motherfuckers and killed their ass. Shit. How old were you when it happened? 19. Them now, are the bodies they know about. So I got caught for two murders. They dropped one. I had, I had two murders, home invasion, three armed robberies, possessed the firearm. You, why did you choose to not just rob them? Why did you also kill them? Shit, I don't know. I just... Like, like, I'm a killer. Well, I mean, when you look back on that at 53, yeah. do you feel any regret for the killing? Hell those no, because I'll kill again. Hell no. Hell no. Were the, were the people that you killed, were they innocent or were they just. Yeah, uh, well, uh, my, my, one was a Caucasian, so fuck them. And uh, the other one, shit, I, he, uh, he had robbed my boy, so I had to come get him. And you say that you've actually got more bodies, but that's just the two that they know about. Right, right. And I got some more coming. Come that was his country built on killing. So I ain't no different than the police. Excuse me, the holies. They can kill. They've been picking us off. I, I, they, they, they killed that girl. They get away with it. So why I can't do it? I fucked up. I did my time. And if I fuck up again, they probably get me death penalty. Because I'm going to burn somebody again and when I get off these questions. If I'm pissed off, that's just the bottom line. And ain't nobody going to stop me. And then what I like to do, I don't need no gun. As you see, man, the spirit of these people, man, is heavy, de heavily demonic, man, by our enemy, man, by Esau Edom. Check this out. Did you know that gangs in Chicago are using witchcraft to try and hurt their enemies? Police found dozens of satanic items in a drug bust in 2021. After questioning the gang members, they confessed what it was used for. They tried to put hexes and spells on rival gangs and try to summon demons to hurt them permanently. And it's not just Chicago. These items have been found in Los Angeles, New York, and cartels. There's been rumors of this for decades, but in recent years, there's been a huge surge among gangs. As you see, man, those most of those gangs are jakes, man. From the Northern Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom, man. Now people have truly became degenerate plants. And uh, I put this lesson together yesterday before camp, so I kind of forgot how I had it flowing. So we're just going to go in the spirit and just make sure I kind of stay on this lesson plan. This is 1 Samuel 15. I'm going to just get the point real quick in 23. It says, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, man. And that's the reason why people do the things they do, man, because they're rebelling against you. How about Shem Yahweh Shah? And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of Yahweh by Shem Shah, he have also rejected thee from being king. So the Lord rejected us from being the kings of Israel, man. He put us in a low state. He put us in slavery. He put us in a low, low state, man. And our enemies are above us. And that's the reason why we are not ruling. That our people, two-thirds of our people are going to be destroyed on this side because they refuse to return to Yahweh by Shem Shah. 
as a man of the Lord, I've been on the highways and byways for many years, preaching these lessons on, on the internet, compelling our people to return back to Yahweh Bashim al Shah before his judgment comes. His judgment comes. And that judgment is also coming from my enemies, man. The Lord is going to let Esau Edom put a lot of people, a lot of our people to death, man, because they rebelled against Yahweh Bashim al Shah. And the Lord is, uh, and the Lord is, uh, <laughs> Uh, not a respectable person, man. So it don't matter if you are uh, you LeBron James or, or um, Tyler Perry, you, you high in the stature in this society. The Lord, if He has judgment set to, set against you, you're gonna receive your judgment, man. As well as myself. This is uh, Deuteronomy 18, and I'm gonna start at nine. It says, "When thou art come into the land which Yahweh by Shemiah shall shall thy power giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do." After the abominations of the nations, of the, of, the, of those nations. So you, you ain't supposed to learn how to do what Esau does, man. You're supposed to be totally separated from those nations, man. Read that again. It says, when thou art come into the land which Yahweh Hashem shall thy power giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. So you're not supposed to lead your children to to, uh, to to wickedness. Be smoking weed with them and shit, you know what I'm saying? Doing all kind of wickedness with them. Teaching them that it's okay, man. You ain't supposed to do that. Teach them like it's okay to sell drugs, tote guns. That ain't, they, that ain't our nation, man. We're totally separated from other nations. That's what they do. Our, our, our Lord had us to be righteous. But we've uh, we deviated from our Lord's uh, our Lord's path that He wanted us to be on, man. So now we're in a we're in a low low state, man. And the Lord is going to redeem two thirds, uh, it's like it one third of our people and two thirds of our people going to be destroyed on this side. And it says there uh, there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that use a divination. Or any observe observer of times, or an ench enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or a counselor, a counselor with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a. Let me get that word. I, I said it a thousand times. Necromancer. Necromancer. So lock you, man. <laughs> I couldn't think of it off the top of my head. Nab 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 Necromancer. Necromancer. Basically just going into witchcraft, man. What you seen those gangs are doing, man. All type of familiar spirits, wizards, witches, charmers, all you know, all the wickedness that other nations that they worship, man. Like that um that um first image you seen, man, Esau's uh, image of his lord. That's a form of witchcraft, teaching you to worship something that is not even a, a power, man. It's an idol. For all that do these things are an abomination unto you, how about Shem Yahweh Shah? Even uh, selling drugs is witchcraft. Selling drugs is, is witchcraft. And, um, you know, so like I said, smoking, smoking it. You're taking all these mushrooms and shit like that. To, to basically anything to change your, your, the way of thinking, man, is, is a form of witchcraft. He says, for all that do these things are an abomination unto you, how about Shem Shah? And because of these abominations, you how about Shem Shah, thy power do of drive them out from before thee. So the Lord driven the people out before him, man. He, he don't recognize you as his people. You two thirds, man. Thou shall be perfect with you, how about Shem Shah, thy power. For these nations which thou had which thou shall possess, hearken unto observers of times and unto divert divert diverners tongue twister for me diviners diviners but as for thee you how about shimmy i thy power have not suffered thee to do uh suffer thee so to do so the lord have us to have observers of time diviners 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 he had us not to go that way man we are totally separated from these people this is x 
x8. We get the point real quick and uh, start at verse 9. It says, um, but there was a certain man called Simon. Now check this out. Which behind, uh, before times in the same city used sorcery and bewitched, uh, and bewitched the people in, of Samaria, giving out that himself was so great, uh, so great one. Basically, he went in there making people think he was great, man, because he witched the people with sorcery. It's like a drug dealer doing a neighborhood. He, he might make a lot of money in the neighborhood, but he, he'll give back. And people will think he's a great. Yeah, he won't, he, he's, not a, um, he's not a witch. It says, uh, verse 9 again, let me make sure I make it plain. He says, but there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria. Given out that himself was some great one, to whom they were, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, "This man is the great, the great power of the Most High." So they thought he was a god. In other words, man, like a, like a movie Dino Brown. They thought Dino Brown was a god, man, because he he was able to um, he used his witchcraft to uh, make the people think he was. He was uh, some type of a uh, god to them, man. And I remember growing up, man. We had uh, drug dealers in our in our neighborhood, man. We looked up to them, man. Like they was famous, man. They had the nicest cars. They had the, the best looking women. They had the best clothes. We looked up to them like they was it was God in our neighborhood, man. Verse eleven it says, and to him they had regarded they had regarded because that a, of long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of the Most High Power and the name of Yahweh Shahamashiach, they they were baptized, both men and women. So when the men of the Lord came preaching the, the kingdom of heaven, they they believed on Yahweh while Yahweh Shah, man. And they was baptized. Then Simon himself believed also. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get you uh, young men and young, young women to come out of that witchcraft of, of thinking this world is going to continue on in the way it's been it's been going, man. You know what I'm saying? Being a hard, you know, hitting the club every weekend, man, uh, uh, selling drugs, being in gangs. Um, you know, just, just all the witchcraft that, that our people have, like the, now it's the, it's the Molly um, uh, perks, perks and all that shit, man. We're trying to get you repent before the judgment comes, man, because... When the Lord continues to, he's continued to show his signs now. But when the Lord gives his last, his last um, prophecy to be fulfilled, and you're not on the on the right side of that of that, of that uh, prophecy, and you still out here in the times of Noah doing all this witch, witchcraft, the Lord gonna bring judgment on you, man. And you're gonna be destroyed, and no one is gonna be able to redeem you, man. Nobody gonna be able to save you out of the hands of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. It is coming. You can just feel it through the Spirit. Verse twelve it says, but when when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of heaven and the name Yahweh Shaha Mashiach, they were blessed. Both like they was baptized, men, both men and women. When then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. So he believed and had faith in Yahweh Shem Yahweh on the signs that the Lord showed to him. But he still had that, 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 we'll read it, he had that witchcraft, still had that witchcraft mindset, man. That's a lot of cats that come into the truth and they still want to be in the world, but they want to be in the truth at the same time, which it, does, it doesn't go hand in hand like that, man. Simon is the same way, man. He wanted, to do, he wanted to be in the world and he wanted to be in the truth as well. Verse 14, it says, now when the apostles which were in at Jerusalem heard that Simon uh, in Samaria had received the word of power, they sent unto them Peter and John. And when, and so like it, who, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is knowing these scriptures, man, and believing and having faith in how about Shemel Shah. It says, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized. Let me read that again. It says, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, 
only they were baptized in the name of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. When they had laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. See, when, it, when they, they couldn't receive it, they prayed for them and they couldn't receive it. But when, he, when they touched them, put hands on them, that's where they, this, these churches get, get that from. They put hands on somebody, they fall down, they, they, they think that's the Holy Spirit, which is not, man. The Holy Spirit is opening your mind to understand the scriptures and to know what, what is this. So the Bible is like a book. It's 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 a, it's a, it's, a, um, it's it's metaphors. Um, Salakia, I forgot how, how I forgot how it went, but it's metaphors. Uh, it slipped my mind. It's a, it's in the scriptures. Um, uh, um, metaphors, uh, uh, dark sayings. Um, bang. I, also, I know woe also go into it too. Ah, uh, I forgot what scripture that was. But basically, the, the scriptures are, are, are meant for are like a are like it's like a movie. I would say it like this to somebody that understand. And that scripture might come to me before I finish this. But basically, you have to know the characters and know how the, how the how the movie ends. So you, you got to know the characters and see how you know everything. The scriptures flow. You know what I'm saying? Because if you don't know what's going on in the movie, if you don't know who the characters is, you ain't gonna know what's going on in the movie. So you got to know that Esau is a so-called white man. You got to know that the Israelites are the uh, Negroes, Hispanic, and Native Americans. This is this is named just two, man, two major parts of it because the scriptures basically go back to Jacob and Esau. You know what I'm saying? From the, from the time Jacob and Esau was born, all way, from back when, when Jacob and Esau were born, all the way to now, the things that that happened centers around those two those two two nations. Verse 16 again, it says, yet, yet, uh, Slaki, for as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw that th th through laying on the of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money, saying, so he wanted to pay for the Holy Spirit, man. And that's what these churches do. They 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 want you to they want you to pay to, to receive something the Lord gave to us freely. Verse 19 it says, saying, Give me also this power. Let me read Simon. Let me read that 18 again. I think I missed it. It says, And when Simon saw that through laying on the uh, laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given. He offered them money. So basically, when they seen the, the, the Holy Spirit was laid on by John and Peter, they received the Holy Spirit. And the Lord basically gave them the power to open their minds to understand the scriptures. And uh, he wanted to pay for it. Simon wanted to pay them money to receive that power. Verse 19 saying, give me also this power that on whoms, whomsoever I lay, my, lay hands, he may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perisheth when thee, Shlaki, that y'all thy money perish with thee, because thou hast not Shlaki, because thou thought that the gift of power may be purchased with money. And that's what the churches do, man. That's the reason why if you're in a church, man, you need to get the you need to get out of there immediately. Because that's what they believe, man. You go on TikTok and all uh it ain't too much on Instagram, but you go on TikTok, man. You got all these TikTok pastors want you to send tithes. They don't even know what that what that uh what that was for, man. They just want you to send money to to. Uh, then they start babbling in all these different languages, which is demonic as hell, and they want you to send money to them, man. That has nothing to do with the, the Holy Spirit. They thinking well, if you send money in, you are gonna receive the Holy Spirit. That's 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 witchcraft. That's 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 witchcraft to the T. Cause that's what Simon wanted to buy. He wanted to buy the people, man. He was a, he was a sorcerer, so he want. And that's what these pastors are doing. They use the sorcery to make the people think if you send money or give them money, they have the power to give you what the Lord gives to you freely. Verse twenty one it says, "Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter." So you had no you had no part of this, man. He says, "For thy heart is not right in the sight of the Most High Power." So your heart is not right in the sight of the Most High Power, man. And this is what Peter was telling him. He says, repent therefore for this thy wickedness and pray power if perhaps the thought of thy heart may be forgotten of thee. 
So that's a, that's a wicked thing you're doing, man, by believing that you can pay for this truth. Pay the Lord for, for the Lord's uh, blessing to be upon you. You can't do that, man. 23 says, for if, it's like it, for I perceived that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, pray ye to Yahweh Shem Yahshua for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. So the Lord, he wanted, he wanted to repent after that, man. He wanted them to pray for him. And they, and they, when they had testified and preached the word of Yahweh Shem Yahshua, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of Samarians. So Simon wanted to buy this truth, man. And the Lord rejected him right then and there. You can't buy this truth, man. The Lord has to ordain you to get it, man. And that's through the Holy Spirit. That's by learning the scriptures, man. It might take you years to learn all this, you know, basically get the understanding of the scriptures. You have to pray and fast to get this information, man. It's don't come on you just because just you want it. This is uh, uh, Jeremiah 5. I'm going to start at verse... Uh, Start at verse 11. It says, For the house of Israel and the house of Judah have dealt very treacherously against me, said Yahweh Bashem Yahushah. They have bel belied Yahweh Bashem Yahushah and said, It is not he. Neither shall evil come upon us. Neither shall we see the sword nor famine. And that's what I, these pastors are teaching these people, man. That's why most of I'm going to say this very, man, mostly in a so called black neighborhood is made up of, of a so called black church. I ain't gonna say the so-called black church, but it is the black church. I heard uh, what is um, D.L. Hughley said: the, the black church is the gayest place in the in the world. <laughs> and he's you know he just a, he just a, um, he just a comedian man, but he said a lot of truth to that man. The church is the gayest place in the world. Verse twelve again it says they have belied Yahweh by Shem Yahushai and said it is not he neither. Shall evil come upon us? Neither shall we see the sword nor famine. It's the sword is coming and famine coming. The sword is a modern day gun, and the famine is you, you're not going to be able to get any food unless you take that uh, the mark of the beast. And the prophet shall be wind, so like it. And the prophet shall become wind, and the word is not in them. Thus shall it be done unto them. So the Lord is going to take the men of the Lord off the streets. And off these these lessons off the internet, man. So you're not going to be able to get the truth, man. And that's near to come. So we we preaching to you constantly, daily, to repent and come back to you. How about Shimei Al Shot? Because the Lord is closing these mercy doors quick. Let me drop down to verse twenty. Uh, turn on to verse eighteen. It says, "Nevertheless, in the in those days, said you, how about Shimei Al Shot? I will not make a full end with you, and it shall come to pass when ye shall say." Wherefore do with Yahweh Shem Yahusha our power all these things unto us? Then shall thou answer me them, like as ye have forsaken me and served strange gods in your land, so shall ye serve strangers in a land that is not yours. And that's where we at now. We strange we our people are serving strange gods, man. And like a video I just showed you, man, the the, the guy. Had heavy demons on him, man. He he, he just he just knew he was gonna kill again, and all and all these uh all these different uh gang members are, are, are using witchcraft, man. The Lord is gonna do away with two thirds of our people, man, in a in a very gruesome way, man. It says twenty. It says declare this in the house of Jacob and publish it in Judah, saying, Hear now this, O O foolish people, and without understanding, which have eyes and see not which have ears and hear not. So you, you see us on the highways and byways. You see these lessons on the internet. You see us all on social media preaching to you to repent because before the Lord comes, before the Lord closes these mercy doors, man, before the Lord brings judgment. You see it, and you still not perceiving that these things are coming. Verse 22 says, Fear ye not me, saith Yahweh by Shem Yahushai? Will you not tremble at my presence, which have placed a, which placed the sand for the bounds of the sea by a perpetual decree that it cannot pass it. And though the winds therefore toss themselves, yet can they not prevail. Though they roar, yet can they not pass over it. So the Lord is telling you, man, I set all these things up, man. 
You're not going to be, you're not going to fear me when I bring this judgment on you. You're not going to repent before I bring this judgment on you. You're not going to listen to them, to the men I have set up on the highways and byways preaching. You're going to ignore every sign I've gave, given you. Okay. Verse 23 says, but this people have a revolting and rebellious heart. They are revolted and gone. So these people are gone mentally and spiritually, man. The Lord said they are gone, man. Don't even worry about it. That's why I say in uh, Jeremiah 11, it said, pray not for these people, for their good. And you can't pray. You, you see, the first thing somebody happened, something happened, first thing somebody say, let's pray for them, pray for them. The Lord is not hearing them. I got to get that scripture. They just hit my spirit. This is Jeremiah 22, and I'm going to start at verse uh, 19. It says, thy own wickedness shall con con correct thee, and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and bitter that thou hast forsaken you. How about Shemi al thy power? And the Lord is saying, thy power is you. I'm your, I'm, I'm your God. I'm not nobody else's. I'm yours. He keeps saying that. It was the fourth, fourth, um, fourth scripture I read. He said, thy power. And that my fear is not in thee. Say if you how about Shimei was shot of hosts. So you don't fear the Lord, man. The Lord tell you, I'm your power, but you don't fear me. You don't believe what I'm going to do. Verse 20 says, for, the, for of old times I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bands. And thou saidest, I will not transgress when upon every high hill and under every green tree thou wanderest playing the harlot. So you don't want to serve and worship all these gods. The Lord's people. You don't want to serve all these God playing a harlot, being a whore for every other nation's God, man. Yet I have planted thee a noble vine, holy a right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me, man? So the Lord gave us your how about Shimei Al Shah, but our people done turned into a, a strange plant unto him. For though thou wash the though thou wash thee with nitrate and take thee much soap, yet thy iniquities is marked before me. Say if you how about Shemi Al Shapal, man. So your iniquities, your sins are marked before the Lord. You're not going to be able to, to get away from your judgment, man. And that's what we trying to we trying to preach to you, Jake. Repent, man. And I'm talking about you black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, man, on your father's side. Because the Lord is not going to have any mercy on you as well as Esau. Because you took on his power, man. You took on his um his God, which you call Jesus, which he's a no God, man. Says your boy Jerry. So the Lord is not going to uh He's not going to have any mercy on you because you didn't repent. Um, this is Jeremiah 11 and 14. It says, therefore, pray not for this for this people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them, for I will not hear. I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. And so the Lord is not going to hear you, man, when you pray and cry to the Lord for your trouble because you had time. And you didn't take you didn't take your time. And um, listen. That's like when you got at school, man. You you you, um, you got you got a certain amount of time to finish the lesson, and you don't finish the lesson, you are gonna get a zero. Shit, if you um if you turn it in or not, you gonna get a zero because you didn't do, you didn't you didn't uh, you didn't finish the work. This is Psalm seventy eight. I'm gonna start at verse one. He says, "Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable." I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. So we, we know all the things that the Lord said was going to happen, man. I remember as a little child, man, the Lord said he's going to destroy the earth with fire. My grandma used to read the scriptures to me, and she said that the Lord going to destroy the earth with fire, and she never knew what that meant. But now I know. I know how the Lord going to destroy it with fire. She didn't, but I know. Four, verse 4 says, we will not hide them from their children, showing to the generations to come the praises of Yahweh Bashem Yahushua and his strength and his wonderful works that he have done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, 
which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. So our people are supposed to be telling this to our telling this to their children, man. The Lord. Making known the Lord to them, man. Giving them the scriptures, man. And let them know that we are the servants of we are the true people of the Bible, man. We are the true Israelites that, the, that walk with Moses. That this generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should raise and declare them to their children. So we're supposed to have taught these this word to our people from generation to generation. But the Lord had it set up that, that these people would not get it, man. And that's the reason why the, the, the um this destruction is gonna be real, real bad on our people because they they didn't listen. They didn't want to listen. They wanted to they thought they knew what they wanted. They thought they knew that, that the Lord was with them. And I'm talking about two thirds of our people that's going to be destroyed in this upcoming destruction at the time of Jacob's trouble. And it's called Jacob's trouble for a reason because the most of our people are going to catch hell the most. Esau is going to catch hell in these other nations, Moab, all these other nations are going to catch hell, but Jacob going to really get it, man, because it's the punishment of him. Verse 7, it says that they might set their hope in the most high power. That's the reason why we're supposed to teach, teach this truth, that they have hope in Yahweh by Shem and not forget the works of the most high power, but keep the, but keep his commandments. Verse eight, he says, he might not be able, it's like he might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation. So the Lord said, we're supposed to teach this to our children so they won't be a stubborn and rebellious generation as the generation before us. A generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with the most high power, man. And, and this is this is not this a you, you really have to be disciplined in this truth, man, because a lot of people can you know get the scripture that one day and then the next day they don't want to you know it, it don't be on them the spirit don't be on them, man. So you you got to continue to to force yourself to get you know what I'm saying if you ain't got the spirit on you got to force yourself to um to read the scriptures, man. You got to force yourself to do lessons. You got to force yourself to 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 make um make lessons and to get other brothers' lessons, man. Look up information, study. All these things, you, if you don't have the spirit, you got to force yourself, man, because if the Lord put his spirit off for you, you can't get it back. You, you can't get it back, man. So I, I try to force myself. If I if I, don't, I, I stay, stay with the scriptures, man, stay with the Bible right beside me, man. That's my weapon, man, the, the scriptures, the Bible. This is uh, Exodus 10, and I'm starting at verse 1. It says, And Yahweh by Shimei al said say unto Moses, go, unto, go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart. And the heart of his servants, that I might show these these my signs before him, and that thou mayest tell in the ears of thy sons and of thy son's son what things I have wrought in Egypt. So we're supposed to continue to teach our children what happened in Egypt, man. You know what I'm saying? Because that was a great work, man. But what's coming is going to be a greater work than that. It says, and my signs which I have done among them. That they may know how that I am Yahweh by Shem Yahweh and these signs he's showing, he's showing before us right now. Like I just read in the beginning of the um, beginning of the lesson, it was five it was five biblical names of um, destruction that came uh, just this past week, man. That's signs. That's what the Lord has given us signs in the ancient time. We're doing it right now, but it takes like I said, it takes a man of the Lord or a woman of the Lord to see these things and understand, man. Continue to stay stay in this this uh this this word, man. Continue to get this this lessons. Continue to stay in the doctrine, man. A great millstone. Verse three it says, and Moses and Aaron came in 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 unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus saith Yahweh by Shem Yahshua, power of the Hebrews. He didn't say any other nation. He said other Hebrews. And I ain't gonna get into that, but I'm keep continue on. How long will thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Let my people go, that thou mayest serve me. So the Lord basically doing two-thirds of our people the same way he did Pharaoh, man. Harden your hearts so you won't come in so he can show his power on you. And you're going to have your head low in the kingdom, man, because you didn't repent, man. You refused. Else, if thou refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow I will bring the locusts into, into thy coast, and they shall cover the face of the earth. And this is what's going to happen again, man. 
the Lord's going to bring great judgment. It's going to cover the earth. That one cannot be able to see the earth. So the, the locusts, in that time, the locusts came. There were so many of them, nobody could even see the earth. It says, and they shall eat the residue of that which is escaped, which remaineth unto you from the hail. And shall eat every tree which groweth for you out of the out of the field. So like you. So the Lord made locusts come and he hardened Pharaoh's heart that he wasn't able to, uh, he couldn't, see, couldn't even see the land. He ate all the food so they couldn't eat, man. So the Lord is doing that right now strategically, man. He's making these people, uh, he's making Esau go against Moab and Moab is going to, he's going to, he's going to stop sending his uh, merchandise into America, man. And he's, and he's doing that right now and he's going to bring a great famine on the land that our people is, is going to be suffering, suffering just like Esau, man. Like of every nation, I'm just saying like as every nation, but two thirds of our people are going to get it the worst, man, because they had time to repent. They had a chance, to, a chance to escape. Esau has no, Esau and the other nation had no chance to escape, man. That's going, that's what's going to make it the worst on you. You had time to escape, man, but you refused. You refused to escape. You wanted to stay and get judged. This is a Exodus 12, and I'm starting at verse 27. Uh, let's start at 26. It says, and it came to pass when the children shall say unto you, what mean ye by this service? So this is basically going back to the ancient time. Now what's coming up? The same thing. So we're supposed to rehearse the righteous acts in, in all our captivities, man. Verse 27 is that ye shall say, what, uh, Slocket, that ye shall say, it is the sacrifice of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai's Passover who passed over the house of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses and the people bowed the head and worshiped. So we're coming into the time of the Passover now. Well, the Passover is only going to be for the hopeful elect, not two thirds of our people, man. Because you're not going to be, your house is not going to be covered. Verse 28, it says, And the children of Israel went away and did as the Yahweh Shem Yahushua had commanded Moses and Aaron. So, the, so did they. So we doing what the Lord say do in, the, in this time now. That our houses will be passed over. The Lord pass over judgment. That we won't receive the judgment that he has for them, man. When he send the death angel to destroy the children of Israel, man. It's like it, it's like it, it's like it. Destroy the, the Egyptians. Not the children of Israel. The children of Israel were saved. Out of that judgment, but two thirds of our uh, two thirds of our people now is not going to not going to escape the judgment of Yahweh by Shimei Shai when he sent a death angel over Babylon and Great and these other nations. This is Psalms thirty four and eleven. I'm winding it down. He said, "Come, ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of Yahweh by Shimei Shai, man." And that's what we're doing, man. We try to this is what we're trying to do to the best of our ability, man. Teach you the ways of Yahweh by Shem Shah. What man is he that desire life and loveth many days that he may see good? That's what we're trying to get you to do, man. That you'll love many days and see good. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from the speaking God. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. So seeking peace and pursuing it is through the scriptures. That's the only that's the only mercy we're gonna have, man, through this word, man. Through this knowledge and understanding of how about Shimei Al Shah. Last scripture. This is Psalms 128, and I'm gonna just read this whole thing. It says, Blessed is everyone that feareth you how about Shimei Al Shah, that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thy hands. Happy shall thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thy house, thy children like olive plants round about the ta thy table. Behold, that thou, it's like it, that thus shall the man be blessed that fear of Yahweh by Shem Yahushah. Yahweh by Shem Yahushah shall bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem out all the days of thy life. And that's in the kingdom of heaven. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children in peace upon Israel. And that's where we repented and came back to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai so that we can, we can see the days of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai in the kingdom, man. And that's where we proclaim for our people to repent before it's too late.
Come out of these gangs, man. Come out of these gangs, man, that you won't be destroyed man, because it, that's deaf culture. We talked about that at camp yesterday, man. Deaf culture, man. Rap, music, all that shit is deaf culture, man. And that's not our people, man. We are holy people, man. Tell you how about Shimei Al-Shah. So I'm going to end it there, man. Lord willing, was edifying. Shalom.